Hello and welcome to today's video about the Linux and Slurm workflow for an HPC job submit. My name is Christoph and I'm solution consultant at the Uber Cloud. In today's video, you will see how to use the Linux GUI of your cloud desktop. You will see how you can apply basic commands in a Linux terminal. You will see how to use Slurm directives to create a job submit script. And you will see how to use Slurm commands to submit and monitor a job. Now, let us dive into the demo. After you have established a graphical connection to your cloud desktop, first locate the files of your job. To do this, open the file manager, then go to the cluster shared storage. Only files that are stored in the cluster shared storage can later be accessed by a compute node. So if your job files are not in the cluster shared storage, your job will most likely fail. Then open your user folder it will start with ANF underscore and the name. And in my case, there's a gearbox folder which contains an ANSYS mechanical job. The job consists of three files, two which belong to the job itself and one bash script that will later execute the job. We will have a look at this bash script later in detail, but first let me open a terminal to show you some basic Slurm commands. I can open a terminal by right clicking on the file manager and click on open terminal here. This terminal will be located in the same directory as the file manager. I can verify this by entering the pwd command. You will see that both file paths are identical. Let me shortly rearrange the windows to show you then the Slurm commands. The first command that I would like to show you is the sinfo command. The sinfo command will print a list of what Slurm calls a partition. Other HPC systems call these partitions queues. They both name a collection of nodes. In our case, we have two partitions, and you can see not only the names of the partitions, but also the number of nodes and their state. We will later use the Q-HC44 partition for our job. The next command that I would like to show you is the SQ command. It will list all the jobs that are currently queued in one of these partitions. This list is empty since no jobs are queued yet. To change this, so to submit a job, we will use the sbatch command. The sbatch command is followed by the job script of the job that we want to submit. So here we can pass the gearbox sh script that we have seen in the folder. However, I won't execute the command right now because first I want to look at the script more in detail. So I will cancel this command and open the script file in an editor. To do this, I will go to the file manager and double click the script. An editor window has appeared that shows us the content of the file. The file begins with a directive that tells the operating system that this script should be executed in the bash shell. We don't have to analyze this into detail, just make sure that your script will also have exactly this line as the first line of your script. Then we see several lines starting with a pound symbol and sbatch in capital letters. That's a so-called sbatch directive. The sbatch directive is used to set options for the sbatch command that we have seen previously. In the first line, the minus P option is used to set a partition. We will use the QHC44 partition. The next line will set the number of cores. Here, the number of total cores is set to eight. In the following line, the n task per node value is set. This means the number of cores per physical node. It is set to four. Because it is lower than the total number of cores, that means that our job will be a multi-node job. So we will end up with eight divided by four, equals two nodes with each four cores, so eight cores in total. The next line of our script is related to the license server. You will have most likely another line. This line ensures that there is a tunneling to the license server. When I recorded the video, I forgot to show you how you can get an overview about all the available options that can be set by the sbatch directive or by the sbatch command. To see this overview, go to a terminal, enter sbatch, followed by minus minus help. You will now get an output of all the available options that you can add to the sbatch directive or the sbatch command. We also see the minus p option that sets the queue name. We see the end course option and the end task per node option. And we will see many, many more. Feel free to enter this command and explore the available options. You could add further sbatch directives to pass further options to the sbatch command. However, this has not been done in the script, and the script then ends with the actual ansys command that will run our job. We will use one of the input files in our folder, and we will generate an output file 
which contains this name. I will close the script again and now I will run the script. As I said, to do this, I will use the sbatch command followed by the name of the script. We see now that a message appeared that a job has been submitted and we get a job ID posted, in our case that's 72. Please remember this job ID. Furthermore, we can now see our job appearing in the list when we execute SQ. The job has the job ID 72 as seen before. It's in the partition Q minus HC44. The name is the name of the script. It was set under the user account HPC user and it's in the state CF, which means configuring. The state CF configuring means that the nodes are just booted up. So our actual calculations are not running. I will now use the watch command to get an updated version of the SQ output every two seconds. You can see now that the time of this job moves forward and you could also see that the status changed from CF for configuring to R for running. So now the job will actually run and we can also see this by refreshing the file manager and another file has been created. That's the slurm minus job ID dot out file. This file is very crucial because it gives us valuable information about the job. I can shortly open this file. This file is especially helpful to debug your job if problems occur because it will lock all the relevant information of Slurm, either errors or just normal messages. Let us now open a second terminal. And in this terminal, I will print a list of all the files in this folder. I will use the ls command with the flex lt, which means that the files are listed and they are sorted by their time. And I will also watch this command to get an updated version of the output every two seconds. We will see in a few moments that more and more files appear. Until this happens, let us further have a look at the sq command. We can also see next to the state the time that has elapsed and the number of nodes as well as a list of nodes. Now we have seen that more and more files appear. That means that our job starts and generates output and log files. We can also see that the output file that we demanded in the script is now created and updated constantly. While the files are created, let us shortly go out of this view and let us have a look at another feature how you can debug your job or get further detailed information about it. To do this, use the sctrl command followed by show job and enter the job ID, which was 72. You will now get a quite detailed output of your job. As I said, you can use this either to debug your job or get more detailed information. Now let us have a look again at the files that are being created. And also let us refresh the view in the file manager. It will take a couple of minutes until the job has proceeded, so I will now make a cut in the video and come back to you when the status of the job will change. You could see for a short moment that the status changed from R for running to CG for completing. Please feel free to rewind the video if you want to watch this again. Now that our job has completed, I can cancel the watch commands and I can have a look in the file explorer. First, I will refresh the files and now I will locate our output file to just ensure that the job has run successfully. I will open this output file in an editor it will give us log information from Anders Mechanical and I will scroll down to the end of the file. And here we see that we have some information about the run times, which means that our job ran through successfully. After this demo, I created this table to shortly recap the command that we have seen in the video. Besides of the command that I showed you in the demo, these are the first four. I also added a note of the s cancel command, which allows you to cancel a job. You can do this when you see that a job won't finish anymore or when you accidentally send a job to avoid costs.